Kung Fu. Show me. Hello everybody, Martial Arts Film Freak here, and today I'm doing something that I've been wanting to do for quite a while. I'm going to do a tier list, a tier ranking list, because those were popular about six months ago, and I figured it's time that I probably jump on board that. I'm going to be ranking Shaw Brothers actors and actresses, but if you've, if you've seen some of my Shaw Brothers videos, you probably know that I'm much more, uh, much more used to uh, Golden Harvest movies. I, I didn't get into Shaw Brothers until much later, so I'm not great at all the actors, actors and actresses, so I'm going to need some help. And for that, I have a very special guest. I have Sean from the Food for Thought podcast, one of my very favorite. Sean, how are you doing? I'm pretty good. Thank you for having me on the channel. And I uh, I hope I can do you proud with the Shaw Brothers actors. I'm excited to have you. Based on what I've heard over the past year of listening, you probably know a lot more with Shaw Brothers than I do. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Uh, do you have a specific favorite? Even though I think Shaw I'm Brothers actor? Guess. Uh, I'm uh, I'm a traditionalist. I think Gordon Liu is up right, there as yeah. one of my favorites. I mean, I mean it, it's like asking anybody their favorite like martial arts actor, and they're probably going to go like Jackie Chan. So like, you know, exactly. that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, we're good. All right, so let's start ranking some Shaw Brothers actors and actresses and see how well we can do this. All right. Right, so let's start with uh, an easy one. Uh, are we going Alexander Fushang? See, you've gotten me in trouble right off the bat because Alexander Fushang is so universally loved by Kung Fu fans. Right. And I am not a big fan of his. Um, he's got charisma, mm -hmm. like oodles of charisma. I understand how you know people were going to say, he, he uh, people used to say he was going to be the next Bruce Lee or the next big thing. And uh, I've just never been a fan of him. Really? So yeah. I haven't seen, I feel like the big one is Chinatown Kid. Never seen And do you know what? That's one I've never seen either. Never seen it. The <laughs> no. two that come to mind are Avenging Eagle and Heroes 2. Yeah, and the stuff like Deadly Breaking Sword, which I do like. And he's in uh, Ten Tigers from Kuang Tung, the, the Venoms film. Um, yeah, he's he's cool. I, I'd put him around a B, personally. Around a you B, know. really? Yeah, right, that's so. The like I said, the two movies coming to mind: Avenging Eagle. I thought was all right. I didn't love it. However, Heroes Two was incredible, and that's also because of the other person who's in it that we'll talk about in a second. Yeah, but that's that's that a great one. All, Heroes Two was pretty dang solid. But I'll I'll, I'll take your word and I'll go B on Alexander <laughs> Fu Shang, and I think right off the bat I'm gonna have some comments, like not myself, but in the comments oh, section, oh, yeah. it's gonna go down. Oh yeah, guaranteed. Uh, up next. Chang Pei Pei, legend. I mean, all of these are legends, really. Absolute legend, um, certainly. Do I love all of her films? No, I do not. But do I respect her for kind of opening the door for uh, women right. heroes or heroines? Absolutely. I mean, she is a true icon of, of Shaw Brothers. Right. It's like watching the original like Wonder Woman 70s show and going like, this is boring, but I get where it's coming from. Exactly, exactly. So you can't really put Chang Pei Pei low uh, on the list. I mean, but she's also got stuff like later in her career, like post Shaw Brothers, like her in like uh, Crouching Tiger. Yeah, she's great in Crouching Tiger. Um, yeah, I, I mean, she, I put her above Fu Sheng, which could be still B, <laughs> but like in front of him. I don't know, maybe A, maybe, maybe she's a. worthy of A because she is. You know, she's a true icon. So right. yeah, I'd say A. All right, so we're gonna run through these at the end, each row, and see if we if we stick with it. If we like, if we like what we got. <laughs> uh, who is this? I think we got uh, Chang, Chang Chang. Yeah, yeah. Chang Chang. Who? Where are we at with him? Um, easily one of the greatest acrobats in mm. Hong Kong cinema history. He's up there with you know Yoon Gao and Yoon Hua. Um, but again, he never. He, he shined, but he never really got his own role. You know, he was never really a leading man. Right. No, no, I couldn't. Other than the Venom's movies, I couldn't really tell you anything else. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And 
to be honest, in the Venoms movies, he was, I wouldn't say one of the weakest, but when it came to actual Kung Fu, mm. he was more of a jumper, flipper, and dodger yeah, than a fighter. Um, oh, would I put him alongside Fu Sheng? Probably. I think Fu Sheng is going to be the one that I rank everyone against now. <laughs> I've seen what I've done, and I'm a little worried. That's all right. We'll come back to it and see if we move <laughs> uh, Next up, David Chang. David Chang. This one's a tough one for me. I um, honestly have not seen much David Chang. I've seen I've seen a handful, and I don't think it ever gets... Well, if we're talking straight up Kung Fu, I don't think it ever gets better than Shaolin Mantis right. for him. And um, so like the big ones I know are new one-armed swordsmen, Mm -hmm. and like the duel with Tilon. the duel yeah yeah that's that's a great film um sadly he went on in my opinion to do better work outside shaw brothers he did two right. films called the challenger and the loot mm -hmm. and they're like top tier for me for him but in regards to shaw brothers you know what? i uh, i don't know I, maybe how bad is C? <laughs> I mean, the C, C is a passing bad. grade. Then again, so is D, but you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, go on then. I would I would go say C. C. Yeah. All right. So the next one's your biggie. I'm pretty sure we're probably going to agree. Gordon Liu. Yeah. He's, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm a Kung Fu cinema fan. I know Shaw Brothers did a whole bunch of different stuff. And obviously you're a martial arts channel. And Gordon Liu one of the kings of martial arts yeah even well before i like truly like started to dive into shaw brothers stuff i knew who gordon Liu was exactly exactly like i mean of course before i really started to get into shaw brothers i had seen like you know your 36 chamber but like you know you know him being in something like true legend or kill bill yeah absolutely people you know pi may is so well known mm -hmm. even for those who don't really know who gordon Liu is yeah so he's an mm -hmm. s tier yeah he's 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 probably going to be like the top one to beat probably i imagine i didn't include any directors but i thought of it but if so you'd get like a loud car lung and s uh, yeah absolutely Agreed. next up i've got someone who i love a lot but he's never really been a front and center guy and that is hoi sang lee yeah um he he is one of my favorites um yeah. i love the guy i didn't do an awful lot that stood out for the Shaw Brothers studio, really. Um, his his defining roles are called uh, kind of more with Golden Harvest. But to be honest, he, the only reason he's on here is because I was trying to make it an even 20. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. But I, I love him. I, I would certainly, I would put him up there. Um, oh, yeah, I prefer him to Fu Sheng, to be honest. Even though, not as a leading man, but... Right. Um, martial arts wise, Lee Ho is, is anytime is the I man. see him, he steals the show. Yes, there you go. Yeah, yeah. so we're we going B, um, B or A. B I'm or willing a. to put him A, but if you're comfortable putting him in B, we can a, do B. A sounds all right to me. I mean, all I think, right, again, that's one that I think people are going to be like, really, Hoi Sang Lee and A, but you know what? Hoi Sang Lee's freaking great. He's he's fantastic, and he doesn't get as much credit as he should get. No, not at all. Yeah, uh, Jimmy Wang Yu. Boo. <laughs> yeah. So I, I hate my favorite you. Jimmy Wang Yu stuff is like post Shaw Brothers. Yeah. Uh, my favorite of his is one on Boxer. Yeah. Uh, one I on think. Boxer was fantastic. And the yep. one on Swordsman I thought was boring as crap. Yeah. Me too. And um, I know that I, like, you know, the older people who grew up with it are probably love one on Swordsman, but it, it's boring. Yeah. I think he was of an era that was kind of before my time a little bit and i understand that people love him but for me i i like very few of his performances so he returned right to shaw brothers with like with because he did a one-armed swordsman with david chang didn't he yeah there's the return he, of the one-armed swordsman then new one-armed swordsman right did he ever do did so like his second his second rent go around with Shaw Brothers, if, if that if you can say it is that, is there anything really that great in there? Nothing's ever stood out to me as far as Wang Yu's Shaw Brothers work, to be honest. Right. Yeah, and weirdly, I prefer him much later on when he's in uh, uh, Donnie Yen's Dragon. Mm -hmm. he's you know, he's the bad guy in that. He's, yeah. he's great in that. But I'm afraid, looking at this list, he would probably be the the lowest for me. He's, he's going D. I think so. I that, think I mean, so. You know what? I can't really argue. 
<laughs> I, and I love them. I love them post Straw Brothers. But yep. in Straw Brothers, just, yeah, kind of boring. Yep, never been a fan. Kara Hui. Um, again, she, she tends to be one of those ones that just shines in movies whenever she's uh, in them. And she's in her fair share of classics. Mm. Um, you know, stuff like... She's in your... Uh... I'm blanking as you're blanking. Eight Diagram Pole Fighter. She's in like, what? Well, I think she's in Marshall Club. She is in Marshall Club. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, is she in, is she in Legendary Weapons of China? I, I think she's in that so. as well. I've got, yeah. honestly, I've got to finish that one. I've got most of the way through. It's, it's very annoying. The last 20 minutes is the only reason you should watch it. Okay, okay. <laughs> I hate to say 45, it. The first 45 is rough. Yeah. Last 20 minutes are worth it, but I'm not a fan of Legendary Weapons of China. Um, but she's she's great. Um, yeah, I think I I think I'd put her in the A category. I think she's yeah, another. I, I, mean, yeah. I can't disagree. I've never seen my young auntie. Is that that one still Shaw Brothers, right? Yeah, that's Shaw Brothers. Yeah, Lao Kao Lung. Is she one of the leads in uh, Inspector Wears Skirts or? She she is in Inspector West Skirts. That's not a Shaw Brothers movie. Right, I didn't think uh, that she's in Lady is the Boss. You might be thinking of that's Maybe. the Shaw Brothers movie. Yeah, um, that's another one, uh, which is which but is know, okay. Are we yeah. are we no, putting an S or A? Oh, are you saying A? I think I said A, but I'm that's happy fine. putting an S if you want. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll I'll go A. I don't know if because she, she is fantastic. I every time she's in something again, she's like with Hoi Sang Lee when she's in a fight scene, she steals yeah. most of the time. And she's one of the leading ladies of Shaw Brothers. You know, I can count the true act kung fu actresses of Shaw Brothers on one hand. You know, yeah, no, I can I can name two. Yeah, yeah <laughs> and they're I've both there. Named Jane them. Baby. Yeah, exactly. Although exactly. I've got another one on this list. Uh, <laughs> next up is Quan Tai Chen. Yeah, great guy. He's done so much, so many Shaw Brothers movies and so many good movies. Um, again, like Deadly Breaking Sword. Uh, which he's great in, um, even the earliest one. He's in Heroes too, right? Yeah, he's he's the uh, he's the opposite uh, Alexander Fusheng. Yeah, yeah. Clan of the um, White Lotus. Clan of the White Lotus or uh, Executioners from Shaolin. That's right, yeah, Executioners. Yeah, right. and um, what's the other one I'm thinking of? Oh, he's uh, in the um, Venom's movie. He's in Crippled Avengers. He's uh, the I haven't kind seen of, that one in about 10 oh, years, so I don't remember. Yeah, he's kind of the lead bad guy, even though Lu Feng is, but he's kind of the lead bad guy. Um, yeah, he's he brings, I don't know, he brings a sense of gravitas to movies. I like He's a great you know, leading man, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I'm, I'm toiling between A and S for him. I, so I... I think I'd maybe go S with him because I think as even like as like a Shaw Brothers leading man, like he probably was like the man. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. S is S is good. Lo Lie or Lie Lo, however you prefer to pronounce it. Yeah, Lo Lie. Yeah. Um, I mean, what can you say? There's two definitive uh, villains in Shaw Brothers. Uh, you, I think most people either like one or they like the other. Right. Uh, I, I lean towards the other, who I see is later on the list, but he's the original Pai Mei. I mean, Low Lei is... How, is... Many, how many Pai Mei's has he been? I know he's Pai Mei in both Clan of the White Lotus and um, the first one that I forgot the name of. Already. Yeah, Executioners from yeah, Shaolin. Uh, I believe... I don't know if he's officially... Pai Mei in Shaolin Abbott, but he's definitely like a white haired villain that looks a lot like Pai Mei. Right. And what's the, the so like the picture I have here, I'm blanking on the movie's name for some reason. Uh, uh, King Boxer. Uh, yes, King Boxer. Mm hmm. That is, uh, which, for a lot of people, I think that's like, that's a really big one. Yeah, I actually watched it last week again, just to kind of refresh my memory. And uh, it's it's a classic for a reason. It's mm, it's so up. good. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, Lole. I think, I think I'd go for A. You want A on him? Yeah. Are you thinking like above, like in front of uh, Chang Pei Pei? Yeah, I think so. I All think right. so. Uh, who do I got here? Uh, Meng Lo? Yeah. Now we get onto Venom's territory. Yeah, I've got like um, three Venoms in a row right here, I think. Uh, yep. Yep. Um, yeah, always, 
always great. Uh, never lives. He dies in 99% of films he's That's in. Right. Yeah. Um, was he the he's... one in, um, God, what is it? Uh, Five Elements Ninja or is that one of the other ones? Nope, he's in Five Elements Ninja. Yeah, That's right. Does. Yep, he does die. Uh, he's in Kid with the Golden Arm as well. He's the lead villain in that. Uh, he's in, I mean, he's in most Venom's films. Um, he was also in a few good non Venom's films. He's in a film called, I'm going to get this wrong, Bloody Parrot. Mm. Um, I think it's Bloody Parrot with oh, Chen Quan Tai is also in it. Um, so, yeah, Lo Mang. Um, I'm, all right. So, go ahead, go it's on. It's somewhere between probably A and B, and it's it's only because he is such a staple. Yes, I was thinking A. Thinking A? Yes. I don't have a and problem with that. There's a there's a reason behind my thinking. Who do we got next? Is this Lu Fang? This is Lu Fang. Um, who I bet I said earlier that there's two kind of staple villains in Kung Fu Cinema. He's actually the third one because he's a villain in so many uh, Venom's films. Right. Uh, uh, Lu Fang, in my eyes, is one of the most underrated uh kung fu actors of all time he does weapons he does acrobatics he does classic shapes he choreographs the stuff that venoms does with other people but he, he choreographs the guy is an absolute legend um i don't think many people would put him in s tier personally i would but i'm willing to hear an argument that might be against that <laughs> i don't have one i know like, like you said you say he's underrated. That makes sense because when I think of my Star Brothers actors, I think my Gordon Liu, Quan Tai Chen, Alexander Fu Shang, and I think of Meng Lo. I yeah. don't often think of Lu Fang. Yeah, uh, Lu Fang has always been. Uh, I've always preferred him. Lo Meng always seems to. I mean, he, he's always a hero and he always dies and he's great, but Lo Meng doesn't really have the acrobatics. He, mm -hmm. I don't think he does many flips and things like that. But Lu Fang, so well rounded. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah. If you're uh, blank, uh, I'm, I'm cool with this, if, if that's what you're going. Let's go S. Let's go okay. S. All right. I am blanking on the name of this next one, if you got Philip it. Philip Quark. Philip, I don't know why. I always forget his name when it's such an easy name. Yeah, the other one's really hard. It, it's, it's actually name's like Quo Chui, and it's really mm -hmm. hard to say, uh, in my opinion. Um, but Philip Quark, yeah. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, he's the... He goes hand in hand with Lu Fang. He's right. equally I as good. I always actually like. I was when I was looking for images for this. I those are the two. I honestly I I kept looking back at, and I'm like, am I, do I have the right name on these two? Yeah, I was yeah. kept mixing them up. Yeah, the the Venoms. I always get confused. I always forget Chang Sheng's name a lot mm -hmm. of the time. Um, yeah, Philip Kwok. I think he was the one of the driving forces behind the Venoms. And um, the fact that he does everything he does, but with only three fingers on one hand, um, that's pretty impressive. Right. <laughs> he had two of his fingers chopped off. Uh, not chopped off, but he lost two of his fingers and he can still use those I weapons. Mean, we can say chopped off. I mean, if it's, if it's a cool story, let's go with chopped off. <laughs> yeah, I wish it was. I wish, you know, it was a sword fight, and but I don't, I think it was an industrial. He lost him in a kumite. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, he'd be up there. If I put Lu Feng S, I'd have to put Quark S, I think. Throwing him S as well? Yeah. I mean, if you, I, it's probably one of those that if you've got one, you have to have the other. You gotta have the magic I, set. I think so. They, they just go hand in hand. So this next one, uh, I couldn't tell you a single movie. I don't know. You've confused and, me with this one. I don't even know who this is. So this just came, like, I was just looking up, like, like I said, I was trying to get an even 20. And I was like, I, this one just kept popping up, and it, it's it's uh, I, the name freaks me out because it just sounds like Shih Tzu because that's a dog. But oh. first name she, last name Zhu. Yes, yes, absolutely. I I didn't recognize her from her picture. Um, and to be honest, I have not seen a lot of films with her in. I think she's in A Touch of Zen, um, which isn't a Shaw Brothers film, right? Um, yeah, I'd have to know it well. I mean, knowing her filmography. <laughs> okay. I don't know if that'll help us. I'm not sure. No clue. I'm going, okay. I'm going to start in the 80s and just go down. Okay. I'm, uh, well, actually, you know what? It ends in the 80s. So that's not That's not that hard. Oh, wow. Uh, Revenge of, of the Ghost Tree. Don't know if that's Shaw Brothers. 
Mm-mm. No. Ah, uh, the murder, a fairy to the world, dirty angel. Any of these ring any bells? Not at all. The great cheat, private first class. Not I think she was. I think she was early. I think if you go to like seventy two or seventy onwards. Yeah, see, starting in seventy one, the lady, the lady hermit. I think that one's with. Uh, yeah, that one's with Chang Pei Pei. Yeah, that's Shaw Brothers. Yeah, she's uh, along with uh, Lie Lo in that one. Okay. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I honestly wish I knew, or I wish I'd seen more of her stuff. I'm not, I hate to say it, I'm not an early, early Shaw Brothers fan. Uh, mm -hmm. Everything from the late yeah, 60s and that. early 70s, yeah, I'm no, not the, a huge the fan. The two earliest Shaw Brothers movies I've seen being One-Arm Swordsman and, uh, was it Golden Swallow? That's yeah, Chang come, Pei -Pei. come drink with me around that era as well. Come, sorry, come drink with me is, is the is the uh, Chang Pei, Pei one I was thinking of. Oh, okay. Uh, those okay. are the two earliest ones I've seen. I think they're both from 1967, and I found them both extremely boring. Yeah, I would I'd have to agree with you on that one. So um, since, since we don't really know much of hers being so early in Shaw Brothers, mm -hmm. uh, how about C, because we at least just don't know? Yeah, let's be let's be generous and do C. Yeah. yeah. Maybe she did some good stuff. Maybe I'll chuck in a fight scene right here and see how it looks. Uh, <laughs> next up, who do I got right here? Dude who I like and name I Sun never Chen. Remember. Yes. Um one of the best kickers in all mm -hmm. of Kung Fu cinema history. Uh, he's up there with, you know, John Liu and uh Huang Zhang Li probably. Yeah. yeah. Um I like him. I've I've always liked him. I've I've always thought he was a great fighter. Um, just lacks on the old charisma side for me. Right. Never stands out in a movie. Hmm. But it's also weird. I feel like he's got like a great face for it. Like when I think in f uh, Five Deadly Venoms, yeah, like I thought he was great in that. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, he's great. What's the film where he learns Wing Chun? It's either Invincible Shaolin or Two Champions of Shaolin. I get those two mixed up. Uh, he's great in that because um, it, it doesn't it it gives him a chance to show off something other than his kicking skills. Right. And uh, he's he's pretty good. And yeah, he's got a he's got a good leading man face on him. Mm. Um, maybe I'd put him along the same lines as Fu Shang and Chang Shang. Maybe the B tier. The area. I'm yeah. Because really, all that comes to mind is for me is five deadly venoms and again i right. loved him in it i thought he was great he's one of my favorite parts of that movie but i couldn't name anything else right <laughs> next up we got t lung true true legend the guy is uh he's been in so many classics so versatile as well uh just great with sword play weapons straight up normal kung fu shapes just so good um and his Korea has spanned such a long time. Mm -hmm. Like even from the even as far as Shaw Brothers is concerned, you know, he's early Shaw Brothers, mid Shaw Brothers, late Shaw Brothers. Yeah. Um Yeah. I think Jackie Chan's dad, even though they're only like four years apart. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, he sure does. Um yeah, I would I'd have to put him up there. I think I'd put him up there as one of the greats. He's been in he's just been in so many classics, right, I think. Going going S. Yeah, yeah. Because he's got stuff like uh, Opium and the Kung Fu Master and then the Kung Fu Instructor a, and things like that. Is he Sentimental Swordsman? He is Sentimental yep, Swordsman. Sentimental yeah. Swordsman. Uh, the, the duel I brought up earlier. Um, yeah. Well, uh, blanking on it. What was I just thinking of? He's in... Um, oh, Avenging Eagle. He's in Avenging, Avenging Eagle. Avenging Eagle. That's, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Ah, uh, who's the next one I got up? Whose name again? This is one of those guys I don't remember. Is that Ricky Chang? Uh, the guy Jackie Chan, I think, fights in, um, Fearless Hyena, the sword guy. Really? I've, I've or drunken, just... Maybe he's the drunken monkey guy? I think he's... Sorry, Mad Monkey Kung Fu. Isn't that Xiao... I can, I get his name wrong. Xiao Ho? I, yes, I believe so. Yeah. I think, yeah, Ricky Chang is one of the, what they call the baby Venoms. He's the, he's the crew that came after the Venoms. Right. Um, he's great. But really, his, I don't know, the only main role I can think of him in is um, he's in Five Element Ninjas mm -hmm. as one of the leads. And I think he's in Ten Tigers from Quang Tung as well. But he's a massive talent as far as martial arts go. But he's, dare I say, a bit forgettable. 
yeah, I'd say because I, I every time I see his face, I'm like, oh yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, I may have to see. Looking at what we've got so far, I'm not sure I could even put him on the B level. I might have to go for C. I'm. I, I would not oppose that because I uh, again, like I like you. You said five elements ninja, and that's probably all I got on him. Yeah, yeah. I, I think yeah. That's put him C. And now I'm worried about David Chang. David Chang may have to move. <laughs> hey, we we can we're gonna come back around at the end, go through all the tiers, and and see if we got to move some stuff around. All right. Uh, who do I got? Is this? Um, what's his name? Is this one? Is it Tian Chi Chang or is it Tung Xing Yi? This one stumped me a little bit. I recognize his face, but I don't know his name. Do I think I'm on Tung Xing Yi? Let me see. And you may have to give me some movies of his, because yeah. Yeah. Again, tried to pad it to twenty. <laughs> Cause like yeah, I'm trying, whenever, whenever you Google Shaw Brothers stars, it like it gives you everybody. It gives you just Hong Kong stars pretty much because it's like oh. Jackie Chan, Yuan Biao, and I'm like, yeah, I'm sure they did one or two. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think like Jackie Chan, I think was an extra in like two Shaw Brothers movies, and yeah. So that's this it. is so his his I guess sort of stage name is is more is Derek Yi. I had him as Tung Shan. Oh, Tung Derek Yi, of course. Okay, of course, from Shaolin Intruders and Shaolin Prince. Yes, I did not recognize him. Um, yeah, Derek Yi, one of, dare I say, one of the greatest swordsmen. I mean, he's not quite Adam Cheng levels, but he's he's pretty fantastic. Uh, but I couldn't name a film outside of Shaolin Prince and Shaolin Intruders. But are those like high up on your on your mental list? They're, you think they're, of them in high regard. They're good, um, but he they're great films but they're not great because of him he's not really a standout to me i i would i put him as c go and see yeah next up that, that's I think b I'm, oh sorry that's b you're right let's go to yeah. c let's put him above uh shizu shizu because <laughs> you don't yeah. know anything about her um next up we've got someone that i think i like more than you do is it, uh what is it uh wang lung way way lung way uh, I love Wang Langwei. He's he's uh, fantastic. He's one of the greatest villains of all time. He's up there with uh, I think Liu Feng and uh, Huang Zhang Li as mm. as the best. Um, I thought that you didn't like him because I think I think you posted something on Instagram a couple like months ago, just saying that you hated his face. Oh, probably I I could I, I wouldn't surprise I wouldn't be surprised if I put something like that. Um, I do I always pit him against Huang Zhang Li. I think I, I did a. Um, uh like a Battle survey or a poll <laughs> yeah exactly who's the greatest villain i think Quang Chang Lee won but mm -hmm. wang Lung Wei is i mean martial club yeah, Mar just... like that's immediately that's the one you go to is martial club and it just that final fight scene is phenomenal yeah yeah um he's also the bad guy from 10 tigers of Quang Tung, uh where he has probably one of the weirdest weapons in have you seen that film i have not his weapon in the final fight is a giant, I don't know if it's a golden mermaid or a giant just golden woman. It's it's bizarre. It's very strange. So it's like a st he's fighting with a statue pretty much? Pretty much, like yeah. Yeah. It's um but he's very, very good with it. Yeah, he's, he's great. He, I imagine you put anything in his hands, he's probably gonna look great with it. Oh yeah, absolutely. And he's the uh he's the villain in uh 36 Chamber of Shaolin, right? I don't think he's like the main bad guy, like, like the like the big big bad guy. Is he not? I don't think so. No. Oh, maybe return to the Third Sister Chamber. I'm sure he fights where they have the um, the stool fight. I think that's return to the Third Sister Chamber. I it can't remember. Be. It's been a yeah. very long time since I've seen that one. But since you love him and I love him, I think we can thrust him to the top. I mean, the first time I ever saw Marshall Club, that final fight scene, I was like, this may be the, one of the greatest things I've ever seen. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's yeah, it's easily one of the the greatest final fight scenes. Uh, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. I, I'd like a Blu-ray of that. Uh, so the last one I've got, I've got again the last one. I've got to look at his name because I couldn't. Way Pack. This. It's Is Way it? Pack or Way Pay, I believe. Uh, yes, yeah, I've got, I got, I've I got Pi Way, but yeah, yeah. Um, again, one of the actors that essentially is a Venom because 
he was in so many Venoms films and he's actually the fifth Venom in Five Deadly Venoms. Um, but never really got the limelight. The others kind of moved on to be, you know, the Venoms crew and went on to do fantastic films. And he kind of got left behind a little bit. But yeah, he's he's great. I like him. Um, probably B. Go on, B. Yeah, I think I have a soft spot for him. He's in Last Hurrah for Chivalry, which isn't a Shaw Brothers film. Right. Um, but I have a soft spot for him for being in that. I mean, it, it's hard to take any of the Venoms and probably put them below B. Oh, 100%. I, I could never. <laughs> yeah. So we're going we're gonna to run through these. We're going to start at the bottom with D. Are we still feeling good about Jimmy Wang Yu? His whole Shaw I, Brothers run as, as D. He's, he's never been in, the, in a more perfect place. Yes. If, if we were just if we were just talking about probably um, one arm boxer, it'd probably yep. throw him into A. But yeah. But just his Shaw Brothers stuff, yeah. I, I just just boring. He he was not the best fighter. He got he got a lot better after Shaw. Oh Brothers. yeah, yeah. And he's meant to be a horrible person in real life. So. Oh, is he? Oh yeah, apparently. That's a bummer. <laughs> David Chang in C. How are we feeling about him oh, in C? I, I feel bad. I feel bad about putting David Chang in C. Um, now that we've put all the others in, in their spots, I think he has to be moved up to B. Go on B? Yeah. Do we, we think ahead of anybody? Um, Probably, uh, he's, he's probably after Alexander Fusheng, to be honest. He's Just probably the Fushang. second one. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, what's his name who, has, who I've already forgotten? Derek Yee. Derek Yee. Uh, I'm comfortable with him there. Again, a great swordsman, but I can only name two films that he's in. And he's good in them, but he's just not a not a classic hero. Right. I think we're keeping Shih Tzu here in, here in C <laughs> because we can't think of a single thing she's done. Absolutely. I mean, we, we found them. We just They're so early and we've never seen them. Right. Or if you have, we completely forgot she was there. <laughs> Are we feeling good about Fu Shang in B? I'm from a... On a personal level, I'm not feeling good You're because I, I I know I know people are going to get very very angry at me. But I've just he's just never shined for me. I've just never been a big fan of him. It's I'm do you know what I'm going to let you call this one. How do you feel about Fouché? For Heroes Two alone, I want to move move him up to A. Okay, because do it. I, as much as I love the entirety of Heroes Two. I don't know if you've, I don't know if it's been a while since you've seen it. The final like 25 minutes of Heroes 2 is absolutely incredible. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. And he's he's in great films. He's in, you know, Life Gamble and I think he's in uh one of my possibly one of my favorite kung fu films of all time, maybe top 3, uh is the the Shaolin Temple, not the Jet Li yeah, version. Not the Jet Li one, yeah. But I've the other version? version. But yeah. Oh, it's it's fantastic. Wang Lung Wei's in it as well, and I think he's a good guy. Oh no, he's a bad guy. Yeah, it's a Wang Lung Wei. He's probably a bad guy. <laughs> yeah, of course. So I'm gonna move him up to A. Yeah, yeah. And hope you feel good about it, David Chang. We're putting him in B. How about uh, Chang Shang? Yeah, I think I I'm comfortable with him. I love him, but he is a a, a lesser Venom. Dare I say? Right. He's a, he's a talented one, but he's, oh. but he's not a Meng Lo. No, exactly. Right. Uh, what was it? Sun Chen? Sun Chen. Uh, great kicker. I, I think he's on level with Chang Sheng, though. Mm -hmm. I, I think if I, I if I wanted to move one, I'd have to move them both. Right. Super talented, not stealing the movie. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this guy's name, who I, again, I already forgot. Ricky Cheng? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, to be honest, I think the last four on these, Chang Sheng, Sun Chen, uh, Ricky Cheng, and then Wai Pei, or Wei Pei, I think they're all kind of on the same level. Um, they're all incredibly talented martial artists, but never really got thrust into the limelight as a lead person mm. and never really shone that bright. Right. I, I can't really argue that at all. Yeah. Let's go up to A, see if we're feeling good about all of A. We're going uh, uh, lowly A. Yeah, definitely. He's he's a legend. I think, I think, uh, yeah, Wang Lung Wei, you know, when it comes to villains, I think Wang Lung Wei is, is kind of higher up than him in my eyes because he just is the better martial artist, I think. Right. Uh, so keeping him in A sounds good? Yeah, yeah, I think so. All right, moving over to Chang Pei Pei. Again, absolute legend. Dare we put her in S as being the woman that opened the door and made it all happen? That's that was sort of on my mind. 
Yeah. Like, I mean, as much like I said, I've I've really only seen Come Drink with Me. She's good in it. The whole movie is just boring. And matter of fact, <laughs> she doesn't even get the final fight in that movie. She gets like poisoned and she has to go fight somebody else. And then they bring in the drunken dude who comes and takes on the main villain. Oh, there you go. I, I, I hear Golden Swallow is excellent. I, I have it and I've never watched it for some reason. Um, do you know what? I think we should probably, we have to have a defining woman in the top tier. So we should boost her up there. I'm cool with that. I'm a, for right now, I'm going to put her right in the middle in, in the yeah. top. Kara Hui, one of my absolute favorites, but I can still see her being A. What are you, so we sticking her there? Agreed. Yeah. All right. Uh, Meng Lo, Lo Mang. Um, yeah, and another absolute legend and just, you know, the strong man. He was always so, you know, powerful and kind of with his Bruce Lee type physique, but I don't think he's a top Venom for me. He's right. middle, middle Venom. So Chang -Chi, A. Chang Chi just needed somebody to take their shirt off and he was the guy to call. <laughs> exactly. Take your shirt off and die. <laughs> right. Spill blood everywhere. <laughs> yeah. With your pecs out. Uh, Alexander Fusheng, we keep it in A. Let's go up to yeah. S. S starting with Gordon Liu. I mean, I mean, there's there's no way he can move him down. Yeah, he. I mean, out of everyone on this list, he's the one that has to be an S for me. He's just, I, he's just my all time favorite. Uh, his movies like define Shaw Brothers for me. You know, I think we should probably just move him down just to make Devin angry. <laughs> yeah, she would not be uh not be happy about no, that. Let's just take him out of there completely. Uh, Quan <laughs> Tai Chen keeping him an S yeah great just uh a very a very strong leading man great face great skills yeah yeah and as someone who like you know only in the past few years really tried to dive more deeper into shaw brothers like he's someone mm -hmm. who i immediately was just like oh this guy's great and i want to watch more of his movies yeah yeah he really is fantastic yeah so what do we got lu fang next yep uh one of my favorite villains and just so just probably the most versatile person on on the list i think just his weapon skills in things like like masked avengers mm -hmm. i mean his trident work in that yeah. is Keep it just phenomenal S. yeah chang pei pei we just put here she's good to mm -hmm. go philip kwok keeping him with lu fang yeah i think i i think we have to right t lung yeah i think he's he's one of the defining actors i mean it's I, it's kind of stupid me saying that because David Chang is also one of the defining actors mm -hmm. of, of Shaw Brothers. But David Chang, as far as martial arts go, never really did it as, as well as T Lung did. So T Lung's you, up you there. You said that he like he's in almost like all the eras of Shaw Brothers Kung Fu time. Yeah. I say Kung Fu time because you know they did movies well before they were just Kung Fu. But mm -hmm. like until like the late or mid nineties, did he ever age? <laughs> absolutely not no all of his not movies i'm like yeah he just looks like he's still like 25 and then all of a sudden you get to like legend of drunk and master and it's like oh yeah he's kind of in his like 40s yeah yeah he uh he stayed the same for a, for a long time um yeah he was always i think he was always meant to be older than the actors he was with but i, I swear he's the same age as them i don't know but he's he's great yeah no he's fantastic Wang Lung Wei, keeping him in S as, as one of the best Shaw Brothers villains. Absolutely. Maybe maybe the best, but uh, yeah, he has to be for there. people to argue about in the comments. Uh, absolutely. So that is what we're sticking with. We're sticking with that in our S as our whole tier right there. S through D. I tried to come up with clever names for the best to the worst, and I said, screw it. <laughs> All right. So that is our list right there. Tell me what you thought in the comment section down below. Thank you so much, Sean for helping me with that. Uh, do you want to no tell the people where they can find the podcast? Yeah, absolutely. The podcast is called Foo for Thought, and it's available basically on all good podcast platforms. You can find it anywhere. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's Foo underscore for underscore thought. And that's Foo as in F-U. Absolutely one of my favorite podcasts. I probably stumbled upon it around like episode five or four. I want to say it was probably like uh kung fu hustle or kickboxer was probably one mm -hmm. of those like first episodes i got to yeah and i just you know i was just looking for good kung fu podcasts you know one that one one ones that weren't just like interviews and was just people shooting the shit about kung fu movies found it and was like oh this is now one of my favorite podcasts and yeah i've been that for about a year yeah that's the key i think uh just to give people a heads up we're we're not a very pretentious podcast we do like to joke around and goof we're not a 
we're not well we are cinephiles but we don't uh we keep it light <laughs> yeah nothing taken too seriously unless somebody starts to insult uh, a jackie chan or something absolutely but it, it is definitely one of my favorite podcasts definitely worth checking out please follow him on instagram like he said don't know if he said tumblr don't know if you're still on tumblr uh, yeah, i've given up on tumblr that's fine so is the rest <laughs> of the world i think yeah exactly but thank you so much for helping out man i'm i'm gonna cut this off right here if you uh tell me what you thought in the comment section down below don't forget to like share and subscribe facebook martial arts film freak over there instagram martial arts film freak i don't post as much cool stuff as him but i post <laughs> i try to life is getting hard and very busy thank you so much for watching and have a good day